catching up with participants from Five Empathy. Please welcome Bernard Carmen He to the stage. Good morning to our headmistress, Madam Winnie Wu, panel of judges, teachers, and all my fellow friends. I would like to talk about something so obvious, but still many of us don't know the true meaning of it. I'm referring to happiness. The definition of happiness is the state of well-being characterized by strong emotions like intense joy. For some people, happiness equals money. Pleasure only lasts for a short amount of time, while happiness is everywhere where you want it to be. I'm not saying that it's impossible to feel true happiness. On the contrary, I'm saying that happiness is all around us. You just have to find a way for yourself to feel it. In my life, there have been many delighting, exciting, and cheerful moments. And my first memory in which I remember I was truly happy when I was about the age of five. And I went to an amusement park with my family. We spent the entire day at the park, and I couldn't have been happier. Of course, I was younger there, and I was happy with everything that entered my path. But it is the small details that make it a day to never forget. We've all had these kinds of days, and we've all had ups and downs. But we are all still so young, and the one thing I want you to remember for the rest of your life is that true happiness doesn't depend on who you're with or what you are doing. It depends on if you're willing to feel it. So, in conclusion. The one thing that has shaped our world to the one we know today is happiness. I believe that happiness is available to anyone at any moment at any place. I believe that we're not the only ones experiencing it. Everybody experiences it differently, but in the end, it's the same. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, "Happiness is when what you think, what you say." And what you do are in harmony. Thank you for listening to my speech. Please welcome Sabrina Fu from Five Empathy. Sabrina, please. That so many of us are here today is a recognition that the trend of climate change is serious. It is urgent and it is growing. Our generation responds to this challenge will be judged by history. For if we fail to meet it, boldly, swiftly. Together, we risk consigning future generations to an irreversible catastrophe. These are the words President Obama used to begin his global warming speech before the United Nations summit in 2009. Good morning to our headmistress, Madam Winnie Wu, the honorable judges, teachers, and my fellow friends. I am very glad to talk about global warming today. If you search on Google, you will get almost 65 million pages about global warming. The subject has certainly drawn a lot of attention. But just what is global warming? What is causing it? What effect does it have on the Earth that is, it, that is in habitat? These are the questions that I will be addressing in this informative speech today. Global warming is a gradual increase of the temperature of Earth's atmosphere and oceans. Over the past century. The average temperature had gone up by just over one degree. This may not seem like much, but many scientists have agreed that the Earth's temperature is starting to increase in a faster rate. Global warming occurs greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane heat trapped inside the Earth's atmosphere. Think about it: if you open your car door after the windows have been rolled up in a hot day. The heat from the sun comes in, but the frame of the car prevents it from escaping. To a small extent, this is a representation on what happens during global warming. Burning fossil fuels like petroleum and deforestation both contribute to the problem. Global warming has already affected the Earth in several ways. It's up to you to decide. Change the world for the future generation. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. Ari Davis and Taban. Ari, please.
a very good morning to, to men and Mini Wu, honorable judges, teachers, parents, students, and my fellow friends. My name is Ari, and I am representing five council for speech competition. My entitlement of this speech is human rights for all. Sometimes rights are defined as privileges. The entitlement for a human being, hence is called human rights. A human is born with these rights, which are present until its death. These rights are for everyone, no matter who they are, where they are from, or how they choose to live their lives. These rights are to protect anyone from violation. These rights give people freedom to live and express themselves as they want to. 10th of December is celebrated as the International Human Rights Day to mark the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, or UDHR. There are few cases where we can see human rights have not been practiced at all. Number one, there are millions of children suffering from abuse and neglect under the age of 15. Number two, in armed conflicts worldwide, there are 300,000 children being exploited under the age of 18. Number three, worldwide, there are 246 million child laborers. Number four, throughout history, women have been restricted from exercising their rights. Number five, internet access was declared one of the basic human rights by the UN in the year 2011, but some don't have access to it. Number six, 21 million people are victims of forced labor. Number seven, leisure and holiday with pay is a right for everyone, but some were granted a holiday. Number eight, domestic violence in many countries is still not considered a crime. It is the duty of the government to implement international human rights. They have to protect and promote human rights by punishing the offenders. We must know that human rights are good for us. We must use it anytime and anywhere. No matter how much we try to ignore it, it's still in our heart. I strongly believe that every human is entitled to these rights, irrespective of their caste, creed, nationality, color, gender, religion, beliefs, or social status. Thank you. Please welcome Karan Daniel up on stage to present a very good morning to our honorable judges, besides timekeepers, Madam Winnie Vu, teachers, parents, and all my fellow friends. My name is Karan Daniel Gidzwan, and I am from Five Humility. Today, I am going to tell you a speech about why drinking and driving is dangerous. Drinking and driving is among the most worst habits practiced by people all over the world. However, this is one thing that leads to occurrence of accidents on our roads, leading to serious consequences. Most of the time when someone is under influence of alcohol, they tend to think that they are invincible. This is a wrong choice. However, it can lead to fatal consequences and should be addressed and avoided. The behavior of drinking and driving may result in devastating or negative effects. For one, this is one main cause of road accidents. A driver under alcohol influence tend to make more influence, tend to make more road accidents compared by a driver without influence of alcohol. Death may occur in many countries across the world due to drinking and driving incidents. Due to drinking and driving incidents, it is vital to look for ways to decrease or better eliminate incidents. There is need to citizens educated about the effects and consequences to drinking and driving. This way, they understand that it is, is and should not be an option as it can be dangerous and fatal. One can also decide where to spend the night in town or wherever they are partying. It is safer because it can guarantee more road safety than later on drinking and driving home. Street laws should be district in every country across the world. Thank you for listening my speech. Have a nice day. Thank up next, please welcome Noel Emmanuel Fabian from Five Humility. Noel, please. Good morning.
according to the honorable judges, excellent timekeepers, Madam Winnie teachers, parents, and all my fellow friends. The title of my speech is The Pros and Cons for Video Games. Every kid has at least heard about video games. Some people really like it, and some people treat it as a curse. There are various impacts to a kid in a play video games. After all, video games have gone through a great deal for development in terms of technology which made games graphic more realistic. Many games are very sociable, either playing against your friends on the coach or with other people online. But because I'm an ordinary kid, I'm going to talk about the pros first. My first reason on why video games are good for us is because it brings the stress. Well, you may. When you completed level or so, you will feel achieved or rather happy. Not to mention happiness makes you feel happy and less sad. This may be the win-win situation. There are many games that involve you playing against other people in team which they can communicate and build up team skill. Second, playing with the games also can make you a better decision maker. Let's go back to a game made in June 6, 1994, which is Tetris. This is a game that involves blocks and many challenges. Your decision making is challenged with skills to fit blocks in a specific order. Another reason for playing with the game is that it makes you creative. Maybe this is the reason why most of our friends are so creative. Games such as Minecraft can boost creativity. Let's talk about some cons. Most friends say if you play too much, it will ruin your eyesight which according to research are proving to be wrong. Although playing with the games are a great way to have fun and relax, but if you play continuously without rest, it will lead to a serious problem for you and others, such as affecting your responsibilities, grades, and social. Let's talk about that. A lot of games nowadays, such as Call of Duty and PG games, are mostly violent and bad for your behavior. It will make you more aggressive. It's better to not play violence games. Another bad reason for playing with the game, you might get addiction. Some people play from 6 to 18 hours. Can you believe that? We need to tell them to stop. Here's addiction, you can't make a shadow. Play for 1 or 2 hours, then read a book or go out to your friends. Don't play with the games too much, because you're not going to sleep for at least 8 hours per day, you might get insomnia. Other than that, playing with the games can lead to obesity and to other health issues because they play with the games all night and put priority on playing with the games. But with playing with the games, they can be intellectual, where they use the club strategy and skills to beat other players. They also can socialize through online gaming by communicating with other players. To end my speech, when you decided to play with the games, Please be more responsible for the things around you. Beware of the game content and be conscious of what we have to change. But overall, playing with the games are fun. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, Noel.